Hey everyone, it's Ted Branshaw here, a farm bill biologist with Southeastern Grasslands Initiative and Quail Forever. Uh, here for another Invasive of the Week video, and we're going to be talking about well, one of the worst invasives there really is out there, that being Johnson grass. So this is some of the Johnson grass. It tends to grow in clumps to identify it. Uh, when in flower, which they do from May to October, it's pretty easy to identify. It has a really open flower head that is essentially pyramid shaped. And this is pretty uh, good because it shows the different stages of the flowers. So when younger, they're going to be just green and not flashy at all but as they become more mature they get this if I get it to focus it turns reddish in color uh, for the leaves relatively large but not huge it has a very distinct white midrib that big vein going down the middle and I doubt you'll be able to hear it but if you were to flip the leaf over and bend it it's sh the midribs tend to snap pretty readily uh, to distinguish from some look-alike grasses things to look for are if it has hairs on the leaves or stems and uh, Johnson grass for the most part is going to be hairless there's no hairs on this blade, uh, as well as on the stem, which this individual does not have any hairs really, except for at the base of some of the leaves. So uh, this is an important area for identifying grasses in general, is where the leaf comes out from the stem or where it encircles the stem. and. Uh, Johnson grass does not have oracles, so I can't really show you what... Uh, I'll add an image later to show you what oracles look like if a grass has them, but they don't have them. But if you bend this back, this area right here uh, is where the ligule is. The ligule on this, it's pretty hard to see, but... Uh, is just going to be membranous and there are a few hairs at the base where the ligule is. Let's see this one shows a little bit better. Yeah so that little bit right there that's coming up is the ligule. Uh, the stem is round which is common for all grasses because it is in the Poaceae family, the grass family. And the when you see Johnson grass, it's pretty typical to see in clumps. I can zoom out a little bit. The reason for that, uh, at least initially, is they tend to grow through rhizomes. Or as part of how they grow is the seed and the rhizomes. But as they spread through the rhizomes, they make these clusters. And that's part of what makes them hard to get rid of and... Uh, what helps them establish so well when they invade a site to treat them um, you have to you can't just spray the top and hope that it'll be enough uh, you have to either do repeated sprayings and uh, mowings to keep the seeds from getting out and just kind of slowly let the rhizomes and the plant lose energy because it stores energy in those rhizomes. Or uh, if it's just a patch, you can dig it up, dig up the rhizome so it can't spread. Or uh, you can, if you just, if you till an area with Johnson grass and you spread the rhizomes out and then plant, uh, it's bad, you just end up spreading the Johnson grass. But if you uh, till them up in the fall an area and get the rhizomes exposed to the air. Uh, spraying then will knock them 
out or uh, the winter freeze should be able to help kill the rhizomes as well. Uh, and for us, for what herbicide to use, uh, to go to the tops or to spot spray, glyphosate does work to knock it back. And there's grass specific herbicides one can use. Uh, there's quite a few options out there, but the important thing is uh, you got to do something about the rhizomes that will probably just keep coming back at least for a couple years while you whittle it down But that is your invasive of the week uh, Johnson grass sorghum halopence in the poesi family